Hey kids, it's Monday, January 30th, about 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and uh, time for another update. Uh, hi, well, <laughs> it's uh, been a lot of stuff going on, and I've been making a lot of progress on my website. Here's, here's my to-do list right here for today. This is today's to-do list. It's two sides. And... <clears throat> anyway, uh, in our last episode, I managed to get everything connected between uh, Google Sheets and WordPress through a um, program called Sheets, SheetDB.io uh, and the use of what are called ACF, um, Advanced Custom Fields in WordPress, where you can make your own little boxes where you can bring your own data over from the spreadsheet. And SheetDB works as the ambassador, as, as the roundabout, because it converts it from the language that Google speaks into the language that WordPress speaks from. Google, Google land to JSON, and then over JSON is something that WordPress and Elementor, the page program I'm using in, in WordPress, understand a lot better. So, and they handle all the riffraff back and forth, of which there's plenty that I don't want to deal with. So that's great. And, uh, and uh, so that is all working. Uh, the design is looking pretty good. I've got a lot of content. I'm going to show you some stuff behind the scenes because I've got one showstopper right now. And maybe some of you folks out there who know more about this stuff than I do can uh, come up with an idea of what I ought to do. Uh, unless I do first. <laughs> um, anyway, yes. Yeah, so let's start here. My modus operandi is becoming clearer. Let's just uh, jump into, I think, Excel first. So this is my spreadsheet that I've been putting together. This is um, a list of my body of work uh, in progress. And I've got everything categorized. This is the, uh, this is the column uh, heading here. And all of these are uh, names for the column that that is below. So these are all the titles. These are all how the name will get displayed. It'll com concatenate together the author name and the title and all like that. And I wanted to be able to keep those separate so I could do things like sort by the author and all like that. And here's the uh, the URL on YouTube where the background video that's supposed to show up behind their header shows up. And that's my showstopper bug right now is that that is not coming across and not showing up when I want it to. Everything else is basically working perfectly as perfectly as possible, except for that. Um, so we will come back to that. But um, anyway, so there's all this other jazz here, uh, captions and descriptions and this media embed column here. This is the actual embed code uh, to actually embed the player, whether it's YouTube or uh, SoundCloud or Spotify or whomever. And so I've, I'm trying to put together a really definitive database of my stuff, of anything that I've been involved with in any meaningful way, that I have like one definitive record that's got like everything I thought about it, or any reviews, you know, the credits, and you can actually hear it, and the edited on the whole thing, and the styles and everything, and what format, and the dates also. And whenever I've been landing on an actual date, I've been trying to be good about putting in the actual, the actual date, uh, not just the year, so that if, Eventually, I'm going to have a really accurate timeline, basically, of all the different shit that I did, in part to jog my own memory as I write my memoirs, <clears throat> So, which is already underway. So, so there's all this, but this is local. This is Excel, and I go back and forth between Excel and Google Sheets. Excel is just, I can, it's just more comfortable to work in and I can work on it locally and keep the file in iCloud so that it's always backed up uh, so that if my hard drive melts down or somebody goes by the house with a 500 pound magnet and drops it on us, that my files will still be safe in the cloud and I can get them back later. Anyway, so what I do is like when I've, when I'm done with like a revision on this thing, then I, uh, I get out of here. Yeah, I just, yeah, that's all fine and good. And I will go back over to Firefox and go to Google Sheets over here. And uh, this looks remarkably like the thing that we were just looking at. But what I'll do is I'll go File, Import, and I'll go to Upload, and I'll go grab that, um, that spreadsheet, which is right here, and pull it up and upload it. And I will say Replace the existing spreadsheet, Import Auto Data, and that way I don't run into any version control problems. The thing, version control is super important, folks, and <laughs> so you don't get yourself. Uh, but uh, you always got to know where the ball is. And uh, so right now, uh, Google has the ball. And, uh, and that's this here. And this gets read by this program called uh, SheetDB, which is this thing over here. 
Uh, and uh, you can see that I've been doing a bunch of work here. This is this is the activity that I've been uh, that I've been doing uh, using their using their uh, software. And I'm going to load that spreadsheet right now into, into the cache so that it's got the latest and greatest version sitting in the receptacle that it'll hold on to. This is great and basically miraculous and made this whole thing possible because it allowed the two things to talk to each other, Google and WordPress. Um, but they charge by the month and I'm on the free program right now and the month I've got two days left, <laughs> just a little less than 48 hours and I'm up to 492 calls. I can only do another eight calls this month before they shut me off and then I'll have to fork over, you know, 30 bucks. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to do the turnover right at the top of the month on Wednesday, uh, not today. So I'm trying to minimize the, the amount of times I do this. I've got basically eight left before they ding me. So I've already kind of preheated this in a in a uh, in an easy bake oven here to show you what this all looks like. So when I go into WordPress, into my WordPress site, this is the for anybody who's worked on WordPress, this is the familiar dashboard, first thing you see typically. And I go down into my pages and go look at all my pages here, and I've just got a, a few uh, that I'm putting together because I'm, I'm building uh, I'm building this from scratch, and you don't want to have a, a ton of iterations of something when you're just trying to get the basics, the underlying uh, format down. So right now I'm working on this direct from Hollywood Cemetery page, which is these guys right here. They are a great band. Uh, and this is how the page looks when it all comes together. This business down at the bottom, socialism, everything down below that, that's the footer. That'll be there on every page and everything up here from uh, this drop that this menu here, home, blog, blah, 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 on up, the, my name and face there, that's the header. That'll always be there on every page. And I've already done those, I, you know, may need a little work, but that's not the part I'm working on right now. I'm working on this thing that's in the middle. And I've got a template that's, the idea is that I wanna have like one design that I can use for all the stuff that's in here. And right now we're looking at uh, 65 entries right now and, plenty more to come. Um, so I want to have like one design that'll work for all of that stuff and make them look all nice and pretty formatted like this. And also so that if I make a change in the design, I'm getting a little ahead of myself because this is what it actually looks like inside the program this is what it comes together. The idea is that if I make a change in the way this is laid out, that it's going to work. It's going to automatically update for every page on the website that uses this template without me having to reprogram anything. That's the payoff. That's why you end up putting so much time in on the front end, building this crap in the first place, so that it'll pay off in the back end. Uh, especially you got a lot of the same kind of content like, like I do here that lends itself to this column row type of thing. And if you can abstract your stuff into column row, your, uh, you know, your, your personal catalog of whatever it is you do, uh, that's that's a good thing to do because that is the most likely format to survive all the different kinds of technologies that will come about is if you've got things in a ledger column row type format because it's exportable to HTML, XML, text, you know, CSV, whatever. You know, it's a very, very basic language, almost as basic as text itself. Anyway, uh, so this is, this is my page here. Now, my problem is that I want this video to show up in the background behind they're behind their name here, and it's not right now. It's just showing me the um, featured image. And I I basically know why that's happening, and I'm trying to figure out a workaround. And that's the problem I'm gonna try to solve. But I wanna show you a little bit about this automatic updating thing. And I'm gonna burn one call to the to SheetDB and doing it. I'm gonna change this listen now to from white to blue, to this other blue color that we have here. Uh, and I'm gonna do it by uh, going into the into the template here, whereas it's this thing right here. But I got to drill down some. I got to show you how we get there. And this is the page. This is the the page for that band. It's this page over here. This one. That's that's this page opened up in Elementor, which is a page building program on top of WordPress. It makes a lot of things much easier, <clears throat> including designing for all the different kinds of tablets and phones that you gotta design your screen for you. You can preview them all up here. This leads to another complication I'm going to get to towards the end of this talk. <clears throat> but uh, but for now, let's stick with this one issue. Um, so uh, here I am inside of, uh, of uh, Elementor. And over here is my navigation uh, thing that I can go and, and click through and look at the different 
uh, parts of this page. Let me open this up a little more so you can see a little bit better. Scroll down here. See, there's my footer. That's automatically popping in. In this section down here with the gray box, if I were going to add new stuff, I would add them in there and then drag them up to wherever I needed. <clears throat> but this is the part that I've already built here. There's two sections. There's this container here, which has the display name. It's my problem child. And then there's this container down here that has all the rest of the stuff. It's got a caption, and then there's two columns, and the left column is flush right, and the right column is flush left, so that they meet in the middle, and the caption goes over across all the top of them, and you can see that design right here. There's that caption right here, right? And this right here is those two columns. And what I've got going on here is that media CTA. CTA means call to action, like I want you to do something. And this thing in, says media embed, that's the player. And then the credits are below that. And you notice the style here, the font size and the capitalization and the color and all like that. And notice how that matches over here, this content over here. I hate the word content, by the way, I'm using it for shorthand, but <clears throat> that's because this right here, description one corresponds to the column over here called description one. And if I go to the row for director Hollywood cemetery and I go to description one, you're going to see that text right there. And there's the one for the caption and there's description two and there's their credits and all like that. And all that stuff corresponds to this, right? As does this player over here, you know, I think you get the point, right? Scroll over a little bit more. It's the iframe. This is actual code that you would need to play that player. Have it show up right here. Okay, so that's great. But um, there's a few things. One is I want to I want to change this. Uh, again, let's go back in into where is it? I'm here. <clears throat> this page is made up of containers. There are three containers. There's one at the top. And then there's two down below. And the, and the one at the top actually contains the two that are down below. It's like, like a Russian doll. It's like a shell thing. But this one at the top here, this is how this whole thing gets started. It's got what's called a short code. There's no dimensions to this. It doesn't have any graphics associated with it. It's just a piece of code. And it's this right here. And this is the necessary piece of code that we need to have at the top of the page that makes the call over to Sheet DB and says, hey, go look at my spreadsheet and go get me that row and all the data in that row and pull it all over here. And so that the rest of the page can go, okay, I need one from column A, I need one from column B, right? And it's just looking at the, the, the column that pertains to the subject, which is <laughs> the row, right? The ID, which is this right here. And this is the only thing that changes. When I make a new page, I set this up here with just a short code thing and these two containers, which are themselves little templates I just drag and drop. And the only thing I need to change is this right here. And this corresponds to this right here, this ID. Now, what's supposed to happen once I do that is that thereafter, this container here is going to call this template. And this template is called banner-sp. And if I go drill into that template over here, and here's a list of all my saved templates. I can see them all and I can handle them over here. And so I manage all my saved templates. But this is that template. Now we're, now we're down inside the shell a deeper level. And if I make any changes here, they're going to be um, seen, reflected, in every page that uses this template as their, as their header. So here we are here. I want to drill into this template. Okay, now if I go edit template, it's going to take me into this page here. And if I click in here, you can see that this is just a text editor, uh, uh, you know, cast member here. <clears throat> and if I uh, click into here, I can see here's my uh, what we got. Here's my media CTA right here, and it's got the color right there. All I got it. Oh, that's why I can't see it because it's against white, right? 
I got to I got to highlight this here. Let's uh, let's just uh, I'm going to just change this to a zero zero just so I can see what the hell it looks like. OK, yellow. I don't want that color, obviously. What I do want is I've got it in my notes. Um, where is my color palette? My color palette is right here. The color I want is this. 22 blah blah. So let's go uh, text color custom and paste that value right there and say okay okay great and then update now when I go back to this page over here and reload this page et voila now now my uh, call to action is in the correct color blue so that's how templates basically work uh, in Elementor you can extrapolate from there now um, here's the thing here's the complication I've been having let's go back to to this to this here I want this video to show up here that I have for these guys if I look over in my YouTube channel I've made all these uh, header videos uh, for my um, uh, for my site and I've got one for these folks here where is it uh, uh, let's uh, right from high center uh, these guys right here yeah this is the uh, this is the header that I made, right? Because it got footage from when we played at Toad's place in Richmond, which was freaking awesome. Uh, and the thing is, because of the way the design works, we only see this middle section plus a little bit of the info at the top and the bottom. We don't actually see all the rest of it, but it's a full size thing because it had to be. In order to uh, in order to work in order in order for it to line up, it needed to have all this extra space here. Uh, but this is so that it fits within this region here, right? Uh, now, if I go and look over here, let's skip back to the beginning here. That that is the web address right there. That is that is the uh, YouTube address right here of their video. That's what's supposed to be showing up. And again, I want to be careful here because I ain't got that many <laughs> that many. Times I can reload this page without burning up my uh, my thing here, but I, I I want basically I can't put it I cannot put it in the template I can't put it here I can't put the call to the to the actual this is this is the line of code that that you have to have in there in order to show the display name okay um. And it depends on the call above it that went and reached out and got the row in question. It depends on that having done its thing and completed in order for this to work. And I think that's the crux of the problem is that there's not enough time for that call at the very top of the page up here, this call to complete before this call is executed in the template as it's going down the page, drawing it to the screen because right, it does these in sequence top to bottom it goes and it gets this first so that it understands what I'm asking for over here this right. and so that it understands what I'm asking for over here this okay. and let me show you what I mean so again this is our spreadsheet and there is at the top these are the names of the different columns okay and you can think of this as a ledger or a shopping list and what the program does is when it gets to this page it has to go look all the way down this row and it has to get whatever is in each of these respective columns for that row that makes up the record for that page we've been looking at this one all right and if i scroll over here you can see some of this is code, some of this is uh, references to other files and stuff like that. Okay. So but when the page loads, it goes and looks up the ID number and there's only one ID, you know, a unique ID for each one of these. It's There are no duplicates, that's the whole point. It's concatenated together from several different pieces of info. Uh, and uh, takes all of that and uh, hands it over to the page and puts it in the defined receptacles where they're supposed to go but there's yet another intermediary between there between between the two between the three that makes it happen the three being 
Google Sheets, SheetDB.io, and WordPress. There's one other, there's one other party involved in this party, and that's ACF, the uh, uh, Advanced Custom Fields. And what that's about is when you make a WordPress page, a, a garden variety generic WordPress page, they give you certain fields. It has a certain definition and it has boxes to put things into and all like that. Let me uh, let me go and edit this page here. Uh, but sometimes you need more than that, like especially if you have a spreadsheet that's got all this stuff that you want to be able to bring in and put on the page. Well, there needs to be like a, a landing zone for that on the page. And if there isn't one by definition, then you got to make one. Well, how do you do that? Well, these lovely folks at Custom Fields uh, uh, built the, the plugin that allows us to do that. So in the case of Direct from Hollywood Cemetery, that allows me to put in, see all these fields here? These don't come from WordPress. So I put all these in and notice how they correspond to these columns over here. There's a reason for that. I built it that way. And not only that, they each one of them have a default value that's getting popped in here without me having to do anything. And it just so happens that that chunk of code is the line of code that's needed in order to go get the piece of data out of the right row that, you know, out of the right column rather, and then stick it in this slot, which in turn corresponds to the thing that we have over here. And that's the house that Jack built, right? That ties it all together. Well, <clears throat> yeah, this is how this code works. Let me just jump over here. Uh, and show you how this works. There's just a few pieces of it. It's not really all that difficult. You need to have this, something that looks like this, at the very beginning of the page. And it has to be on the page. It can't be in the template. Because the reason why is, is, is the ID number has to change every time. And if I put this in the template, that means this ID number would always be there in the template and would always go get just that one row out of the spreadsheet. And the one thing I can't do is I can't say, go get me the whole friggin' spreadsheet. And then when I'm down below into the pages, then tell me the rows. That doesn't work that way. <clears throat> I have to go at the page level. So I make the call. This this gobbledygook right here, this is my ID number. That's that's the ID number that they gave me that, that allows me to tell them, hey, that's my spreadsheet over there. That's the one we're looking at. Okay. And then I'm searching on that unique ID thing. That's that field over here that tells me which one it is. And this is the thing I'm telling it to look for. I'm telling it to look for this string, this ID equals blah, blah, like that. And, and that corresponds to, as we've said, this, this column right here. And then here's, here's the last piece of it. Uh, whoopsie, hang on. The last piece of it is we save that, what we just did, this thing right here, on something we're calling my sheet. Now my sheet is what is the football now that we're gonna hand around to the rest of these little boxes down below. My sheet holds in memory everything that we just went looking for in that in that row, okay? So now that's called a slot. That's what GDB calls, we're putting it in a slot. So now, because see, we call sheetdb right here, and now we're, now we're telling the URL, the address first, okay? Blah, 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 this is how this all comes together. Now, down below, when, we're, when we wanna go get that info, we have to say, hey, sheetdb slot. Yeah, you know that thing, that slot that we saved? Yeah, it's called my sheet, it's because you can have more than one. Uh, and it's contained inside a tag it's, that has brackets here. Uh, it's a short code, basically. Right, you see how it has that slash sheet db dash slot that means hey sheet db dash slot i'm done with you goodbye <laughs> that's all i needed all right to the next thing it's this thing in the middle in the two brackets that's the part that's different every time and by putting it in two brackets that's their language that's their special thing that's their special handshake that says hey i'm asking for something by a specific name tell me this it's the background video URL, which is the URL of the freaking video I need over here, this one here, so that I can show it in the freaking banner over here, display, yeah, 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 hey, yeah, go get the display name, show that here, right? But where can I put this call here? This, what this is supposed to be is, this is the page now. Now I'm inside, I'm no longer inside the template, I'm inside the page for this band. Okay, and I'm looking at this container, which has that template that I'm flying in. 
And at the container level here, at the page level here, is where I should be putting the link. And right here, this is under the style, under the style uh, tab here. There's three tabs. There's layout style and advanced. That's your crash course in Elementor. Uh, right here under video link, this is where, this is where we click, and this is where we connect it to that background video URL. And that thing right there is the thing that's sitting over here inside this page right here, back here at the at the grassroots level, right? Because this is this field that we defined over here in custom fields. I've already got them open in a tab. I thought I did. Yeah, here we go. This is this is custom fields. Custom fields is a plugin. It's an extra that you can add on to any WordPress site, and they have a free version and a pro version. And for me, the free version does everything I need it to do. I can make a group, and inside that group, I can put in all kinds of fields. And hey, look at this. These all correspond to the spreadsheet, right? Because I made them that way. And you just add a new field, and when you go into the field, you can tell what type of field. This is actually a really powerful program because you can do all kinds of stuff. You can have all kinds of fields. Me, I'm just doing the plain vanilla. I'm just asking for text, right? And I just want I just want the text. And here's that default value. So you see that's that line of code calling that unique ID column that I want for this special field that I just defined. And that's why when I go make a new page or I go look at this page, it already has that call already predefined as what it is I'm asking for when I just say, hey, give me unique ID or display name or media CTA over here. It understands that what I really mean is all that sheet DB crap with media CTA in the middle. And it's just showing it to me here because I'm, sh I'm attaching the field, the ACF field into my template. Not, not the direct call to, to sheet DB. It's, it's, there's this other fourth intermediary, fourth, fourth party. Google Sheets to sheet DB to ACF to WordPress templates in Elementor that show us WordPress pages. That's the human centipede that makes this shit all work. And it works. It does work, except for one thing. It doesn't give me my freaking video. If I go look at this page, I, I actually, I, I've, see, I got the um, featured image there. That's what's being shown over here in the background there. But you see how that's cut off? See how that's like zoomed in and cut off? That's why I made this background like this. Now, where am I? How many have I burned of the, uh, of the sheet TP here? Let's go take a look. I've got, I made one more call. Okay, I'm going to burn one more call. And I'm going to show you what it ought to look like when I mean, the video's in there. It's, is it here? Yeah, it's here. Instead of the ACF field here, I'm, oh, no, actually, I'll do it this way. Uh, I'm going to go into the page, and I'm going to put it here. Right. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to grab this, grab this URL right here, this guy. Copy this. And I'm going to go here. And instead of making the call to SheetDB, I'm just going to put the URL in there and have it update. Because that this shows that all the other calls are working except that one. And again, I think it's because like, it's just not happening fast enough. Let's go ahead and where's the page? Yeah, it's this. Reload this. Actually, let me just double check, make sure everything is in uh, updated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 